Hi, folks. I hope you are fine and well. Uh, I just uh, added a, a message just to to know if you are if you can hear me. If you could uh, just uh, uh, thumbs up in that message, that would be will be great for me. Okay, many thanks. Now that you can hear me, so welcome to another lecture. I hope you had a, a good morning. So today we are going to continue with the with the instructions of the of the computer. We mentioned yesterday uh, a little bit of this uh, instruction set architecture, and this is what we are going to see today. Uh, as always, remember that part of the material I will be using in these uh, slides is taken from from the book I also commented on the first lecture. So this is the outline we will uh, follow today. We will uh, explain a little bit more in detail what is uh, the instruction set architecture, and then we will see some operations of this uh, instruction set, and also how do we uh, provide operands to those operations. So let's start then with the instruction set. We mentioned yesterday that uh, for every processor architecture, we have uh, a set of instructions in order to tell the hardware uh, what to do. For different uh, architectures, we will have uh, different instruction sets. For instance, uh, the processor from my mo mobile phone has a different architecture from the from the uh, than the processor of my of my desktop, and. Uh, Therefore, those uh, processors uh, will potentially have different instruction set architectures. They will have uh, many aspects in common, as we will see, but uh, the instructions will be different. The good thing is that once you know how an instruction set works, you can easily uh, uh, understand other instruction sets. At the, at the, in the beginning, uh, as the technology uh, was not very advanced, uh, the computer architectures used to just provide very simple instruction sets because that uh, make uh, uh, that made simple uh, also made simple the the implementation of those instruction sets. But as the as the technology were progressing and advancing, the instruction sets were. Uh, uh, becoming a, a little bit more complex and uh, at some point this uh, trend uh, change again uh, and uh, nowadays uh, what we see is that modern processors use simple instructions. If you if you think about it, so uh, uh, years ago uh, the, we mainly have desktops and desktops have, have a lot of performance, a lot of resources, so we could uh, uh, use uh, complex instructions there. But if you if you see now, and if you remember the the chart we saw uh, yesterday, uh, almost the the most popular uh, type of computer is uh, embedded computers are smartphones, smart smartwatches, uh, wearables, uh, smart TVs, and all of these things are embedded. And all of these processors are very simple. And for this, they also have simple instruction sets, as we will see today. So there are mainly two types of uh, instruction set architecture. The first type is what we know as complex instruction set computing uh, that you see at the bottom of this slide. It's called CISC. This instruction set has complex instructions. Therefore, I will need less instructions for doing uh, operations. And this also means that each of these instruction is complex, so it's going to take me it's going to take more time. On the other hand, we have something called RISC, which is reduced instruction set computing, which uh, is uh, the opposite of uh, CISC. Uh, we have very simple instructions, therefore, for doing an operation, I will need more, instru more instructions that, per program than, uh, than with CISC, but each instruction is simple and it will take less time. 
Okay. So let me let me put show you here an example. For instance, on the left side we have uh, an operation with six, uh, the complex uh, instruction set computing, and on the right uh, on the right side we have the equivalent for that instruction with rigs, the reduced uh, instruction set computing. So here what we are doing is yeah we are just adding. Uh, uh, these uh, those are indeed not uh, numbers. Those are addresses uh, of memory, as you could see here in the bottom. So we are adding two numbers that are located in this address of the memory and this other address of the memory. So this will be with the complex instruction set. With one instruction, I can do all this. However, if we move to the reduced one, so here we cannot do directly this uh, operation. First, we need to load the first operand from memory to a temporal register. We will see later what that means. Then we need to load the second operand to another temporal register. Then is when I'm capable of adding those numbers here. Okay. And finally, I need to store the result back to, uh, to the memory. So, uh, now probably it makes more sense the explanation I, I have told you before. Six complex instructions. I need I need less instructions per pro, per program, but every instruction is going to uh, need more time. On the contrary, risk more instructions per program. The those instructions are simple and therefore they will need less time to to execute. So for instance, now I'm going to show you some uh, some examples of real uh, instruction sets. The previous were types of instruction sets and those are real uh, instruction sets uh, that you see nowadays. For instance, we have x86, which is mainly used for, for desktops and servers, computers, supercomputers. Then we have ARM. You can find those in tablets, smartphones and embedded computers. There is also a third one is just here just for completeness. It's called MIPS. It's similar to uh, it's also a, a, a risk uh, instruction set is reduced and is similar to, to ARM. So I have now uh, a quick question for you. So uh, what I want you to do is uh, that you uh, search in um, uh, you, you can use Google or whatever you want to search so uh, your uh, smartphone and try to see if you can uh, find what is the the ISA of your smartphone. So I provide here uh, you a couple of uh, of uh, suggestions and then if you have a laptop or a desktop, just do the same. Try to guess. You look the the, the type of your processor and you try to find there what is the 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 architecture the instruction set architecture. I will. Uh, Post as a usual a link to to the to this uh, quiz now to the to the chat. And I give you some time to to answer these two questions. OK, I see some responses. I'll give you some more time. So you can see in the screen. In your smartphone. 
most of you have say it's a, an ARM one. And in your laptop desktop, you see the trend is different. We see that we have an X86 uh, instruction set architecta. So yeah, this reflects uh, probably what is uh, uh, what is actually happened uh, in the what we can see actually in the in the market. So for instance, if you have a, a Qualcomm Snap uh, Dragon in your in your smartphone, this uh, is an ARM uh, processor, so it will have a, an ARM uh, ISA. If you have an, an iPhone 11 with a, an a A3 processor, it usually also means that you have a, an ARM processor, therefore again an, an ARM ISA. And then regarding your laptop, for instance, I have looked for a, an Intel Core i9 and we have also a, 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 and we see that the, a, in this case, this has an x86 a, ISA. So now I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think that the, the what do you think that is the the type of the ISA for uh, for x86 uh, processors and uh, the same for uh, for me? And I would like to uh, again I will add another form in the chat. And I would like that you tell me what do you think with uh, the knowledge you have right now. So what do you think this? What do you think is the the type of uh, ISA for x86 ARM and MIPS? For this, I give you less time because I think this is an easy, a more easy question. So I see some responses here are arriving. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's good. So most of you think that the type of x86 is uh, the complex one, CISC. That's uh, the correct uh, answer. We will see now why. And then we also, most part of you, but here I see you have more more uh, more that the the for the arm and for the MIPS those ones use the reduced one. So if we think about about this, so let me just change the slide. So with the x86, uh, we have seen that those uh, type of uh, processor architecture is mainly used for uh, for uh, for laptops or desktop. So here we have more performance, more computing resources, and that's why uh, we have there a CISC architecture. We can afford there uh, having more complex instructions because we have more uh, uh, computing power. We have more resources to 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 uh, carry out those uh, instructions. In the case of the ARM and uh, MIPS, those are RIS because the the those ones are processors usually used in embedded computing devices, which has uh, limited computing power and also limited resources. Hopefully that makes sense now. We will uh, be commenting a little bit more, uh, more about CISC and RISC at, at the end, and I think it will make more, more sense uh, in the end. So now, uh, What is the, the ISA we are going to use in this module? So in this module, we are going to use the, the ARM. Uh, you probably know ARM. Uh, it, uh, in this case, we are going to use uh, 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 an instruction set which was released in 2011. It's called ARM B8. Uh, it's used in a lot of uh, uh, embedded computing devices. And that's one of the reasons for using it. 
because as you, we saw uh, the other yesterday, um, a lot of computers, a, lo a lot of uh, computing devices use uh, ARM processors. Notice, however, that for pedagogic reasons, we will use a, a subset of this ARM V8, which is called LEC or LEC V8. And this is what actually we are going to use in this module. What this means? This means that what, what we are going to see in this module, you cannot use it to program your current mobile phone, which has an ARM V8 uh, uh, architecture, but it will be so close to it, to it that you will uh, for sure be able to, to program uh, for, for uh, the, your mobile with the knowledge you get here. So, uh, as I have mentioned, we will use this. Uh, uh, this is also the, the, the instruction set used in the book. And I will refer uh, now to uh, something called reference data. It, it is also sometimes referred to green day card because um, some time ago, uh, it was a, 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 a green uh, seat. Right now it's just a white one, but some people call it green, green card. So this, uh, if you go to the canvas of the, of the module, you see that here you have a document called leg BI reference data. Okay. So here, what you can find is a PDF with all the instructions that uh, we will be using. We are going to see those instructions now. This is just to, for you to know that uh, you have this available and uh, you can download it. So here you have all the instructions and explanations, and this is what we are actually going to cover. Okay, some of these instructions. So why ARM? We, I have already mentioned, remember that yesterday I showed you this chart. From here you see that uh, personal computers, which will be the one using x86, uh, are not very common. The most common ones are smartphones, tablets, IoT devices, uh, smart TVs, smart speakers, and all of these uh, usually have a, a, an, ARM, uh, an ARM processor. And this is the main reason for, for choosing uh, ARM for this for this model. So now we are going to move to the to the to see some operations. I'm going to check if there are some questions. Okay, seems everything is fine. So. Let's start with the first operation. The first arithmetic operation is very simple. It's just add and subtract. So if we want to add two, uh, two operands, we will need three, uh, two, sorry, two numbers, we will need three operands. You can see the operation here in, in natural language. So if we want to store in A, B plus C, what we do in, uh, in assembly language uh, is we have an instruction called add, we place here the destination, we can place here operand 1 and we place here operand 2. Now, uh, subtract is the same. The only thing which changes is the, the operation. Instead of add, we use sub. Okay, I think this is very clear. So all arithmetic operations have the same uh, form. Operand code here and three operands. So this is, I think, is very simple. And why all the arithmetic operations have this form? Because when we do things uh, simple, uh, this uh, makes implementation uh, also simple. And uh, as we are uh, using uh, our processors in embedded computing devices, which we have not a very high performance, so this also is benefits beneficial for uh, this uh, uh, type of processor. Okay, so I think this is very simple and it's close to the to the natural language. So I will just continue. 
I have just mentioned uh, this thing of simplicity for the design. We will see also other uh, design principles, but the first one is uh, make things simple. In the case of uh, of uh, of this uh, type of uh, instruction set architecture. So let me show you a more complex example. So you have here. Yesterday I showed that not all of you are familiar with C, but I think that you can understand this even if you don't know C. It's very close also to natural language, so uh, I think this operation is, uh, is easy to understand. And we have here the equivalent code in leg V8, the equivalent code in assembly language. Remember that yesterday I showed you that we have three levels of, uh, of program code. We have the high level language, which will be this line. And then we have the, 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 the assembly language, which is this one. And after this one, uh, this is translated to binary language, which is actually ones and zeros. So this uh, high level language is converted uh, into this uh, uh, assembly code. So the first operation, G plus H, is the first line. We are just adding G plus H. And we are storing it in from the for now we will say that we are using a temporary uh, variable which is to t0 in which we are storing this result okay so the first line we in the first line we are doing this addition in the second line the same we are doing this addition and so here we have the first addition is in uh, a temporary register called to the second uh, operation is stored in a temporary register called T1, and then the final operation is a subtract, which I actually place in the final value F. Okay, I give you some time to, to see the equivalence. I think that is clear. I give you some time to. So now, as I have mentioned, all the arithmetic operations have the same form. So they have an operation code, the add or the sub or whatever. Then we have operands, input data. In this case, F is output data. And then we have, uh, well, as I have mentioned, in this case, we are using temporary registers in this case. So, one operation, two inputs, TO, T1, and one output. This is the, the usual form for arithmetic operations. And if you could see here, one C statement, it's uh, converted into multiple uh, uh, assembly instructions. That also, if you remember, uh, yesterday we talked about abstraction. So, this is uh, what uh, we were meaning. So we only need one statement in C, but if we will be using assembly, it will be more complex. We need more instructions and it will be our uh, programs more complicated. So you could be wondering now why we are not doing more complex operations. So instead of more complex instructions, so instead of using uh, for three instructions for doing this operation. Why we cannot do just this in one instruction? Well, as I have mentioned, this is just a design decision for this uh, 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 instruction set. So, uh, and it's selected, as I have mentioned, in order to, to meet some uh, practical reasons. Uh, we have seen that uh, making things simple is a good design decision for this kind of uh, low uh, of uh, for this kind of uh, processors. Additionally, we have another reason is that this makes also simple to uh, when we want to implement these uh, things in hardware and we will and when we want to make improvements because everything that is regular is more uh, simple uh, is uh, it can be easily uh, improved than when we have different instructions with different formats, etc. 
So now we are going to move to the operands. I'm going to check. We have some questions here. So someone is asking, is leg V8 a version of assembly code? Yes. So as I have mentioned, leg V8 is a subset of ARMv8, which uh, we find uh, in this, uh, we are going to use in this module uh, just for, for, because it's uh, easy for, for, uh, for teaching purposes. Do you find leg V8 in real processors? No, you will find, you will find ARMv8. Which is very close to leg VA. Okay, so let's move to the next point. So now operands of the computer. So we have seen a couple of arithmetic operations like add and sub, and now we are going to see how do we actually provide input and output operands to those operations. So all arithmetic instructions use uh, registers as operands. We will see what uh, is a register shortly. So in the case of leg V8, we have 32 registers, each one of 64 bits. Those registers are used for data that we access with a lot of frequency. Uh, we, uh, uh, therefore, those registers can be quickly accessed. Uh, when we uh, hear the, the, the term double word, we are usually referring to a 64-bit data, double word. When we are uh, referring to uh, the term word, we are referring to a 32-bit uh, uh, data. We will see uh, this in a figure uh, in the next slide. So in this uh, instruction set, we have, as I have mentioned, 32 registers of 64 bits. 31 registers are for general purpose. We will also see uh, for what uh, purpose is used each of those registers. And then there is a, a, a another register which is uh, always a zero because it's uh, a very common value. So the register in this case, in this instruction set, the register 31, which is also called uh, X set R from zero, it's always equal to zero. And we have something similar for, for words. Instead of being the, the registers, instead, instead of being named with X, they are named with W. Okay, so graphically, a register in leg V8 is a double word, 64 bits, which is the same as two words. Each word therefore has 32 bits. Each word can be divided or split it in two half words, 16 bits, each uh, half word, and then each half word can be divided in two bytes. And you know that each byte has eight bits. So why uh, we have 32 registers and not 100 registers or uh, another number? So the reason is that uh, uh, this is another uh, uh, design uh, reason. So uh, we found that having this uh, number of registers and not more, we have uh, the trade-off that we want between a speed and, uh, and uh, having more registers. So in this case, the less register we have, we can uh, store less information, but we have fast access to those registers. So we need to find a compromise between the number of registers and the uh, and the time we uh, the access time to those registers. So I have mentioned we have 32 registers. So we can see here. Uh, for what are used all those registers. This information is also available in the reference data that I have shown you previously. So you can see here in this PDF, here in this part, you can see all the registers 
and what are they used for? So from the time being for now, we are going to focus only, for instance, remember that in the previous examples, we were using temporal registers and uh, we, will, we, we have just called them TO and T1. So here we are using, uh, we are going to use now the real reg temporal registers for leg VA, which are uh, registers from X9 to X15. Why temporal registers are X9 uh, from X9 to, uh, to X15 because the designer of this uh, uh, instruction set decided it to be like that. Okay, this has not any other reason. So if we want to implement again the same example as before, but now using the, the real leg BI registers, remember that previously we were using T0 and T1, and now we can actually use uh, temporal registers. So for instance, we have seen that F is stored in a register called X19, G in X20, H in X21, I in X22, and G in X23. Then the temporary registers are in X9 and X10. Okay, so this will be the equivalent code we have seen before, but in this time using real registers from uh, leg BI. I'm going to see, it seems there is some questions. So someone is asking uh, for any ad additional material to understand the basics. So in the book, chapter two, you will, you will find uh, an explanation with text that probably helps you to do, to do that. So someone is asking, let me check. Okay, I don't see any question that I find useful for all of you. So now hopefully this is clear. If not, don't worry. So you will, we will be doing a lab this Wednesday and you will understand this better. I understand that uh, in the uh, this is uh, uh, all new for you, so don't worry. You will uh, hopefully understand this better in the next lecture and in, uh, in the lab. So now remember that we yesterday referred to these uh, uh, components of the computer and we were, uh, we, we say that we have the processor, we have uh, a uh, data path and control. Remember that we say that in the processor, uh, the control tells the data path what to do and the data path is the, is the one performing the operation. So what we are actually saying is that uh, uh, the data path is the one who has uh, something called arithmetic logic unit, which is the, uh, the, the unit uh, which performs the, the, the addition, the subtraction, multiplication, division, and we also have here in the data path the registers in order to have inputs to those operations. So this will be the, the data path. And the control is what says, okay, data path, you have here register uh, 19, you have here register 20, just add those registers and place the result on register 21, okay? And yes, the, all this is uh, what we refer to as the central processor unit or the processor. So now, apart from registers, we, we have also something called memory operands. What this means? This means that uh, there are sometimes that we don't have enough registers to store all the information. So we need to have uh, another place where to store all data. In this case, for instance, we have something called main memory in which we can have uh, extractors, uh, arrays, dynamic data, and we can uh, use uh, data in memory in arithmetic operations. For that purpose, what we need to do, as we are going to see, we need to load data from memory to a register, 
then we perform the operation and we then store the result back from the register to memory. Something to notice here is that uh, the addresses in memory in LegBI are a byte address. That means that for each address, we are referring to one byte, eight bits. So let me show this graphically. So if, if, uh, if each address identifies one bit, we will have just uh, address zero will be for bit uh, zero, address one for bit one, and, and so on. But what we are saying here is that in LegBI, we have byte address memory. That means that address zero refers to eight bits. Address, uh, and then if we want to, uh, to if we need to go to the next address, it will be address eight because uh, each address refers to uh, eight bits. Okay, we will see an example later with, with this. Just wanted to point out that addresses are not consecutive, are in terms in uh, powers of eight. In order to, to load a register from memory and uh, store it in memory, we have these two instructions. This U here from uh, these instructions is from a scale. And this is uh, uh, what I have just mentioned. Uh, regarding the, the addresses. So an scale means that you need to uh, provide the correct address. So you cannot say address zero, address one, address two. You need to multiply it by eight in order to scale it to the uh, to the terms that use uh, leg bi. So for instance, let me show you an example. So here we have this operation. This is uh, adding uh, a variable uh, uh, and then we have an array with eight elements and we are adding the element number eight to this variable. Okay, so this variable here, in order to uh, access it with leg B8, we need to scale it. As I have mentioned you, uh, we have byte address memory, so we need to multiply this number by eight. So if I want to access the eight element, I need to multiply is eight by eight, and then I will place here 64. So with this 64, I will be accessing the element eight of array A. In this case, I am assuming that array A is stored in a register called X22. So with this operation, I'm loading the value of A8 into a, a variable, a temporal register, which is called X9. And then I'm adding that temporal register X9 to uh, the, the final output. Okay, make sense? Now imagine that I want also to uh, store this in, a, in, a, in an array. So this is basically the same we have shown, seen in the previous slide. Now the difference is here. So we want to store the result in memory. So in this case, we do the same. We want to store it in the element 12 of array A. So what we do is we just uh, access this element by multiplying it by 8. So 96 in this case refers to the 12th element of the array. And in this case, instead of loading the data in memory, we are going to store the data in memory. If you see, the format is the same for all instructions. We just change load. We just change load by store. Okay. There are a lot of instructions you have then in the reference data. I'm not interested in all these instructions. The only thing I'm interested in is that you understand the bicycle one, the load and the store. Again, if we move uh, to uh, our processor memory structure, what we are adding here is this memory. So till now we have say, okay, if I want to add or subtract elements. I have data in registers. What happens if I have more data than registers? So I need to use uh, something called memory. And then 
I need to move data from memory to a register, do the operation, and the output, I store it again in memory. Why uh, we have registers, why we have memory? I ha as I have mentioned before, registers are fax faster than memory. The problem is that they are limited. That's why we need memory also, uh, for uh, because there are times in which we need uh, to have more data than registers available. And uh, the compiler will try to use always as much registers as possible because they are faster and only use memory when mm, there is no free uh, uh, enough space in uh, the registers. So I have told you that in leg V8 we have 32 registers from uh, 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 X0 to X30, and then the X31 is also referred to X uh, set R, which is always the number zero. In terms of memory, we have this number of memory words. Remember, I have told you also what a word is. So uh, if this is, if my memory is like, uh, we consider that my memory is like an array, we will have uh, uh, this number of, of words, okay? Now, let me uh, go back to the example I showed you in the beginning. So remember that in the beginning I showed you uh, the equivalent code for a CISC and a RISC operation. So remember that for CISC, we were adding two uh, address memory. Now you understand better what, what this means. So uh, with CISC, we don't need to do the load from a memory to a register. The operation is doing that uh, for us. Uh, the operation will be more complex and will take more time because he needs to load the register from memory, uh, the, uh, the register from memory, do the operation and store the result in memory. In, in, in the other side with rigs, we need to load from memory, from this uh, memory address to a register, then perform the operation and then store the, the data back. Okay, hopefully that makes it more clear. And finally, what we are going to see is another way, which probably is the easiest one, to provide arguments to uh, operations. It's called immediate operands. In this case, you see here we are just adding a number. There are some times in which we just want to add a number. So for this, we don't need to have that number stored in a register or in memory. This is called immediate operands. And uh, this can be specified in this way. So if we want to add uh, uh, number four, we just uh, need to uh, do it this way. See the difference here? Instead of add, we have added an I here, which means add immediate. This means that I can add in the second operand an immediate value in order to add this number to the operation. Why we have this immediate operands? So, as I have mentioned, it's very useful, it's very common to add numbers, constants to, 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 uh, to variables. So, this, this is why we have this immediate operands, operands to make this common case fast and uh, to avoid load, load instructions for this uh, kind of operands. This is a more complete list of arithmetic operations. You have all of them in the PDF I have referred to. I'm not interested in you learning by head all these instructions. The only thing you need to know by now are the, 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 the four first one. So add, subtract, add immediate, subtract immediate. Those are the ones we have seen today. And I think they are uh, easy to understand uh, uh, and they are very close to natural language. So, I will uh, 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 I will refer, I will try to answer some of your questions now. Let me just uh, review what we have seen, and then I will try to address some of your questions because we have like five minutes for this. So we have seen. In more detail, what is an instruction set architecture? We have seen some operations for this instruction set architecture. We have seen the add operation, the sub, the sub operation for both for adding and subtracting elements respectively. We have seen 
the load operation and the stored operation for loading and storing uh, uh, registers from memory. And then we have seen how to provide operands to those uh, or arithmetic operations. This could be in the way of a register, in the way of a memory or like an immediate value. In the next lecture, we will uh, see how actually those instructions are represented in the computer, how these assembly code instructions are translated into binary machine code, into zeros and one. We will also see additional operations called logical and conditional operations. Now I will try to answer some of your questions. So let me check. So someone is asking, uh, but I think this is clear. Let me check. Someone is asking for all these registers. So all these registers, sorry. So uh, the numbers just indicate register one, register two, register three. As I have mentioned, we have 32 registers. If I want to access register one, uh, uh, well, in this case, register one is register zero. Uh, I will uh, add uh, the zero. So X zero refers to register zero. X one re refers to register one and so on. And I, so as I have mentioned, we have 32 registers. So this is a way of uh, telling to weak uh, register we want to access. Can you explain again what are temporary registers and what, where uh, they are stored? So, yes. So, so a temporary register, we have 32 temporary registers. Uh, sorry, we have uh, 32 registers and uh, in this case, with uh, leg BI tells us that those registers are x9, x10, x11, so on, until x15. And they, those registers are stored in a, in, a, in a register file which is uh, provided in this architecture. So the, these uh, uh, registers are uh, there for you to, to use. They are provided by this instruction set. So you have these temporary registers and graphically, they are stored, uh, you could say that they are, you have something here in wh which contains all those 32 registers. And if in an operation, in an ad, I say I want to use register 9, uh, it will be uh, taken from this register file, that register 9. So, let me see. Someone is asking, the information for this is in chapter two. Additionally, if you go to Canvas, you can see uh, that uh, for every uh, lecture we have, for every, I mentioned here, uh, the chapter of the book and, the, and the, the concrete section. So for instance, for lecture one, we have the sections. For lecture two, uh, and all the other, and all the lec all the lectures uh, regarding instruction set architecture, I mentioned here, they refer to chapter two and all the sections. And then, so all this information is there. So someone was asking, what was the purpose of uh, register X22 in the memory operands? So uh, in this case, register x32 was used to refer that this array was stored in this uh, address. And started, so in, uh, in this uh, register, we have an address. And this address indicates where this array uh, begins. So this means that this address, the first element of this array will be in x22, uh, zero. The next element, the uh, element one, will be in x22, and then here we will have to place an 8. So this x22 is 
like the base address for this A array. Hopefully it's clear now. Okay, I think it's time to go. So don't worry, you have more questions. You know that uh, you can use the, as always, the, the, the ticketing system. And uh, yes, I will try to also answer some of your questions here. We have also Andrew. And yeah, if you need more help, just uh, yes, me know, let me know. So many things, many thanks for uh, your attention. And uh, yeah, I hope you have uh, understand uh, understood something. We will try to understand more things uh, tomorrow, step by step. And yeah, have a nice rest of the day. And thank you, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, see you, see you uh, tomorrow. Bye bye.